Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfect Snellus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our biochemistry playlist. In previous videos, we talked about DNA, RNA, purines versus pyrimidines, nucleosides versus nucleotides. We talked about the process of replication, which means to copy your DNA. And we talked about the process of transcription, which means to make RNA from the DNA. Today, we'll ask ourselves, is it possible to turn this process on and off yes indeed we can it's the story of the lac operon let's get started please watch the videos in this biochemistry playlist in order here is the central dogma of life when you make a copy of the dna we call this replication when you convert the dna into rna it's called transcription and then we have some post-transcription modification to convert the heterogeneous nuclear RNA into messenger RNA. And then translation will take that mRNA into proteins. And we talked about all of this before in detail. In a nutshell, genes on DNA code for proteins. Here is my original DNA coding strand. And then you replicate, you make a copy. And this is the new DNA template strand we use it as a template to make RNA from it via transcription, and the hero here is an RNA polymerase. After this, you can translate the meaningless codons into meaningful amino acids, combine them together by peptide bonds, you get proteins. The enzyme lactase is a protein. Ergo, lac operon from lactase. Do you remember the Tata box in the beginning of the DNA strand? Yeah, what's that? It's the promoter. It promotes the binding of RNA polymerase to the DNA, which promotes transcription, which subsequently promotes translation. What is the definition of an operon? It's a group of genes, okay, so group of genes, which means they are on the DNA and your DNA is in the chromosomes and the chromosomes are in the nucleus. We get it. A group of genes that cluster together on one chromosome, okay, they share one promoter together, amazing. They are transcribed together as one group, i.e. as one single mRNA molecule. Think of the operon as a tribe of genes. And this tribe will code for protein. How about the lac operon? A tribe of genes that code for the protein lactase, which is an enzyme needed to digest or metabolize lactose. Normally, the bacteria, just like your brain, prefer glucose as a source of energy. The bacteria would love to metabolize glucose. This is the ideal. But what if the surrounding circumstances are not ideal? What if glucose is simply not there? Then the bacteria will have to shift towards lactose metabolism. As the corporate shells say during a pandemic, quote, These are unprecedented times, therefore we need to pivot, i.e. pivot from glucose metabolism into lactose metabolism, because the bacteria gotta survive. So if glucose is available, easy. The bacteria will utilize glucose as a source of energy. Amazing. How about lactose metabolism? Who cares? No one needs this right now. But what if glucose is lacking? These are unprecedented times. The bacteria will pivot towards lactose metabolism, which means lactose metabolism is on, but glucose metabolism is off because simply glucose is not there. Lactose is a sugar. Lactase is the enzyme that digests or catabolizes this sugar. And lactose will be broken down into glucose and galactose. Look at that. Here is lactase as a disaccharide sugar. It is digested in your intestine via lactase enzyme into glucose and galactose, both of which are monosaccharides, both of which can be utilized by your body to make energy. The bacteria will digest the sugar known as lactose via lactase. This is catabolism because I'm breaking it down into glucose and galactose. Both are sources of energy. So when glucose is there, lactose metabolism is switched off, i.e. the lac operon is off. Lactase will not be made and lactose will not be metabolized because I don't need it. I have the preferred glucose. But what if glucose is lacking? Well, we will switch our lac operon on, which means lactase will be transcribed and translated, which means protein synthesis will happen. And this is a protein. 
which will digest lactose into glucose and galactose. Therefore, lactose metabolism is on. In the first scenario, the lac operon is off and there is no lactase. In the second scenario, the lac operon is on and there is lactase. Most of the time, of course, the bacteria has the abundance of glucose. These are the normal times. The exceptional times are here. Therefore, we can argue that the lac operon is normally switched off because glucose is there. However, under certain unfavorable conditions, i.e. when glucose is lacking, the lac operon will be turned on and the bacteria will switch to lactose metabolism. What do you call the system that is normally turned off, but under certain unfavorable conditions, we can turn the same system on? It's called an inducible system because it can be induced from the off state into the on state. All right, under normal circumstances, the lac operon is turned off. How? A repressor protein binds the operator and represses and suppresses and oppresses the operator. No operation will happen, i.e. no transcription, which means no protein synthesis, which means no synthesis of lactase, which means no lactose metabolism, which is okay because I don't need it, I have my glucose available. However, when the glucose is lacking, the lac operon will be switched on so that the bacteria can utilize and metabolize lactose. Now, how do you turn the lac operon on? Easy, remove the repressor. Oh, remove the oppressor? Yeah. And who's gonna remove the repressor? High lactose levels will do this for you. The higher the lactose, the greater the unbinding of the repressor away from the operator. Now the operator can operate, transcription can take place, and you will end up with lactase, which will help you metabolize lactose as a bacterium. Question. Who made, i.e. coded for, this repressor protein? Answer, the regulator gene, which is upstream from the promoter, which is upstream from the operator. Because we are going in this direction. This is how RNA polymerase moves. RNA polymerase adds nucleotides from the 5' prime to 3' prime direction. So what's the name of the gene that made the repressor protein? The answer is, it's the regulator gene. Okay, who got repressed and oppressed by this repressor? Answer, the operator site. Therefore, here is the metacosis way of doing this. Think of the regulator gene as an oppressor gene. An oppressor gene will produce an oppressor protein. The oppressor protein will oppress the operator. So the operator is the oppressed person in the story. It's actually funny, you know why? What's the old name for this cell? It was called T suppressor cell. What's the new name? T regulatory cell. It is still a suppressor. It's a cell that suppresses. By the same token, think of the regulator gene as an oppressor gene and think of the operator site as an oppressed site. So here is the full story. The regulator gene will code for the repressor protein, the oppressor. And this oppressor protein will oppress the operator. The operator here is the oppressed. When the operator is oppressed and repressed, there is no transcription because RNA polymerase will not be able to move. Because the repressor acts as a road block, RNA polymerase will be unable to continue reading the DNA nucleotides and the RNA polymerase will be unable to synthesize the RNA nucleotides because of this block in the way which means no transcription, no translation, no lactase for you. This happens when lactose is unavailable. When lactose is unavailable, the repressor binds to the operator. But when lactose is available, the lactose will kick the repressor off of the operator and the operator will be free to function. So let's talk about each part. What's the promoter? It's the site recognized by the RNA polymerase and the RNA polymerase will know, you know what? Okay, I should start here and I should move this way. Thank you so much, promoter. Such as your Tata sequence, thymine, adenine, thymine, adenine. 
This is the promoter. How about the structural gene? Well, this is the gene that will make the protein that you want for you. In this case, it is making lactase protein. How about the operator? Oh, this is the oppressed person. Non-transcribable region of DNA. A repressor protein can bind the operator and the operator will be repressed or oppressed, which means RNA polymerase will not be able to move because of the block, the repressor, which means no transcription and no lactase for you. What's the regulator gene? It's a gene. Think of it as the repressor gene, which codes for the repressor protein. When lactose is unavailable, the repressor binds to the operator. RNA polymerase cannot move, cannot make no nucleotides, no transcription, and no translation, and no lactase for you. But when lactose is available, high lactose will kick the repressor off of the operator. Now the operator is free. The block is gone. RNA polymerase can cruise through the strand, laying down beautiful new RNA nucleotides so that transcription can occur, so that protein synthesis can occur, so that you have your lactase, so that you can metabolize this lactose. Let's say it again because this is the most important part. Here is the repressor protein, coded for by the repressor, i.e. regulator gene. When lactose is unavailable, the repressor is bound to the operator. That's the road block. RNA polymerase cannot cruise, no transcription, no lactase, which is okay because the bacteria is metabolizing glucose anyway. But what if the environment has lactose? Lactose is available, it will kick the repressor off the operator. The operator is free, RNA polymerase is free to cruise through the strand. Transcription will happen, translation will happen, lactase will be produced, and the lactase will metabolize lactose into glucose and galactose, which are sources of energy for the bacteria. So the bacteria is happy either way. But the bacteria is happier, bigger thumbs up, when glucose is there because this is the preferred source of energy. But what if glucose is low? Low glucose activates adenylate cyclase enzyme, which converts adenosine triphosphate into cyclic adenosine monophosphate, which activates something called CAP, catabolite activator, protein. I love the name. It's a protein, okay? It's an activator of the promoter, all right? And it's a catabolite because catabolism is part of what? Metabolism. What are you trying to metabolize? Lactose. Name the catabolites, glucose and galactose. Oh, it actually makes sense. So the low glucose activates adenylate cyclase, which increases cyclic AMP, which activates CAP. This catabolite activator protein will activate the promoter. It will bind to the promoter and activate the promoter. When you activate the promoter, everything down the road is activated. RNA polymerase is cruising through. Transcription will happen. Lactase will happen. Metabolism will happen. Catabolism of lactose is feasible. The lac operon is on. The first story was the story of low glucose. The second story is the story of high lactose. When lactose is high, you know it's gonna kick the repressor out of the way. So now the operator is not bound to that repressor protein. The higher the lactose level, the greater the unbinding of the repressor. And now everything is free. RNA polymerase is cruising. Transcription is happening. Lactase is being produced. Lactose is being metabolized. The bacteria is having some energy. Amazing. The lac operon is on. If you want to know how exactly the high lactose kicked the repressor off, it's a beautiful story. Lactose, allolactose. This allolactose will literally stuff the mouth of the repressor. Now the repressor is busy with this allolactose. The repressor does not have any place available to bind the operator. It's like some parents who have a teenage boy. They'll say, this boy is always causing troubles. Stuff his mouth and he will shut up. When you stuff the repressor's mouth, the repressor will shut up and will be unable to bind to the operator and will be unable to repress the transcription. Ergo, we have four possibilities. Low lactose and lactose is there. 
high glucose but lactose is not there, low glucose and lactose is not there, high glucose and lactose is there. Here's a pro tip. Do not try to think of more than one variable at the same time. Just focus on one. All right, let's start with low glucose. You know that low glucose activates adenylate cyclase, which converts ATP to cyclic AMP. Cyclic AMP will activate CAP. CAP will bind to and activate the promoter and everything is cruising and I have tons of gene expression, tons of transcription, tons of translation, tons of lactase. Amazing. I'm done with the first variable. Let's talk about the second variable. Lactose is there. When lactose is available, lactose will kick the repressor protein out. There is no repressor protein here. Amazing. Everything is cruising. From one and two, ergo, tons of gene expression and transcription very strong this is the best case scenario for the lac operon next high glucose well if glucose is high it will not activate the cap let's think of the other issue lactose is unavailable when lactose is unavailable the repressor protein will remain binding to the operator polymerase cannot move no transcription no lactase for you i.e. the lac genes are not expressed. Third possibility or third scenario. Low glucose and lactose is not there. Low glucose activates the cap, activates the promoter. Lactose is unavailable. Unfortunately, the repressor is there. Even though the promoter is activator, oops, the block is in the way, which means the RNA polymerase cannot function, no transcription, no lactase. Ergo, the lack genes are not expressed. Last possibility, high glucose, lactose is available. If glucose is high, the cap is not activated. If lactose is available, it will kick the repressor out. So you might get tiny amount of expression and tiny amount of transcription. We call this basal expression, minimal. But this is in no way as strong as the first scenario because the first scenario had both factors boosting the gene expression and transcription. But in the last one, only one factor is helping, which is the lactose. Next, some stupid definitions. Inducible system, repressible system, negative control, positive control. Inducible system, just like your lac operon. The system is normally turned off because glucose is already there. But under certain conditions, when there is no glucose, we can turn the system on. This is an inducible system, i.e. a system that can be induced from the off state into the on state. Next, repressible system. That's the opposite of inducible. Normally, the system is on. Under certain conditions, it can be repressed and turned off. Example is the TERP operon. What's that? TERP stands for tryptophan, but LAG stands for lactase. Next, negative control versus positive control. Negative control. Well, binding of a repressor protein inhibits transcription. That's a negative. Negative control. What if I want transcription to happen? You gotta remove the repressor first. Both the lac operon and the terp operon are negative control systems. How about a positive control? Binding of a protein boosts transcription. So in a nutshell, the lac operon is a negative control, yes indeed, inducible system, I agree. But the terp operon is also negative control. However, it's not inducible. It is repressible. Speaking of repressible systems, let's talk in brief, not boxers, about the terp operon. Define the repressible system. The system is normally on, but under certain conditions, it can be repressed, i.e. turned off. What do you mean by the system is on? I mean the cell is making tryptophan. Okay, that's an on. What are those certain unfavorable conditions? When tryptophan is so high in the environment, the cell will respond by switching the tryptophan synthesis off. Oh, that makes sense. It's a good old negative feedback. The cell is making tryptophan. But if tryptophan keeps piling up, piling up and accumulating, this very high tryptophan will inhibit the formation of extra tryptophan. It's the good old negative feedback mechanism that you already know. Let's dig deeper. When the system is on, explain why is the system on? 
because the repressor is not active. Okay. Under certain conditions, the system will be turned off. How come? The repressor is going to bind a co-repressor, like a pilot and a co-pilot, making a repressor-co-repressor complex. This complex is active, unlike the repressor alone. In this system, repressors alone are not active. But when they bind the core repressor and they make a complex, they become active. Active to do what? Well, it's called repressor. So it's going to repress. Repress what? The making of tryptophan. Oh, I get it. That's a repressible system with negative control. Why repressible? Because it's normally on. Later, it can be turned off. It is repressible. Why do you call it negative control? Because binding of a repressor inhibits transcription, as we've seen. Bacteria love glucose, but even when glucose is not there, the bacteria can make it. But how about the harmful bacteria? How can we get rid of those? You can learn more by downloading my antibiotics course at medicosisperfectionaries.com, which will teach you about antibacterials, antivirals, antifungals, and antiparasitic medications. No subscription needed. You download it once and you keep it for you forever. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.